Okay, I want to thank the members of the media uh, that are here, at TV and print, radio that are here. I'm here with Health and Human Services Commissioner Helen Calton Harris, who has done yeoman work on our continued attack to defeat this COVID-19. Let me open up with this first of all. As we have done with other natural and man-made disasters, myself and my administration, which is tested and true through a number of those natural and man-made disasters, I'm going to look you straight in the eye and tell you what has occurred, number one. Number two, what we're going to do about it. And just as important, hope that we will get through this together. After examining and consultation with Commissioner Helen Calton Harris, we're going to have to make some drastic moves. We are now in a crisis mode, but one that we can control. The numbers yesterday was an all-time high of 296 cases. Lo and behold, Commissioner Helen Calton Harris has indicated to me today's number has come in at 451 positive cases, the new all-time high. This Omicron variant is spreading very rapidly. So in turn, we're going to have to act with public health mandatory orders. This is despite the Herculean efforts of our hospital systems, Bay State Medical Center and Mercy Hospital, Herculean efforts by our testing sites, AMR and others, but they are now being overwhelmed, as Dr. Kerouac and Dr. Roos have indicated with their respective medical institutions. And AMR is now testing thousands a day. I would hope and pray and wish that we would get that same type of amount of individuals to get vaccinated, because that's the ace in the hole to defeat this COVID-19. With that, and late this morning, through the Commissioner Helen Calton Harris and the authority of the Board of Health and myself, we have instituted immediately a mask mandate for all city buildings immediately. And that is regardless to vaccination status. We are also issuing a mandate citywide, indoor mask mandate citywide, which will take effect Monday, January 3rd. This is to allow businesses to properly prepare for this public health emergency order. This mandate will stay in place for 60 days, and we will reassess it, as we've done in the past with other mandates, March 1st, 2022. Helen and I do this abundance of caution and we understand trying to balance, obviously, public health and safety and keeping our economy going. But it's also done to preserve and protect our city and my city's workforce so we can continue to provide the vital services to our residents and to our business community. Helen will go into the statistics but overall, we're hovering near 60%, 60%, 30 and under, that 20, 
age range that are just simply not getting vaccinated. As we continue to move forward, despite all these Herculean efforts, we're going to have to put these mandates in effect. And let me reiterate to you that this is about public health, plain and simple, not about politics at all. And conspiracy theories never solved or cured a medical challenge and some of the stuff you read in social media vaccines work get the facts there's no excuses accessibility to get the vaccine there's no issue about getting that working together is the only way that we're going to be able to defeat uh, this COVID-19 we will continue to keep you updated with information. You can go to www.springfield-ma.gov for information and updated information pertaining to our continued attack on COVID-19. I'd also like to put across from Dr. Kerouac and Dr. Roos, please, their ERs are overwhelmed. You please do not go to their emergency rooms to have COVID-19 tests being done. There's numerous areas where you can go and it's important that you stay away from the ERs unless it's an emergency situation, but not for your testing type aspects. We are going to continue to push the cure to this. This dilemma that we're in right now is getting vaccinated. The vaccines is, is the cure. We have done this before where we made these mandate moves and we were able to uh, knock down uh, infections and increase vaccination rates. Uh, but right now we're in crisis mode and we desperately have to increase the vaccination uh, rates. Uh, this Omicron uh, uh, variant is like wildfire and Helen will go into that. So that's why we will take these measures in protection of not only our or my city's workforce to preserve them, but also to the residents and the business community. I know these moves might seem a little tough right now, uh, but it's the right thing to do based on the statistics and the facts, uh, medicine, sciences, and public health. It will make us stronger uh, as the light comes at the end of the tunnel as we move to defeat this COVID-19. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Commissioner Helen Carlton Harris. But again, I'd like to see that same aggressive approach, especially from our younger residents, uh, that they're going out getting tested to get vaccinated. That's the ace in the hole. Without further ado, I'll bring up the Health and Human Services Commissioner of the City of Springfield. Helen Carlton Harris. Thank you, Mayor. As always, thank you for your support. This is a very sobering time for us in the city of Springfield, the Commonwealth, and the nation. COVID-19 cases are at record numbers, unlike what we've seen in the past. The sobering statistics are extremely disturbing. One statistic that I just looked at today, interestingly enough, the mayor and I did an update on December 28, 2020. At that time, there were 150 deaths in the city of Springfield. December to date, 2021, our total is 284. What that means is that over this past year, in the city of Springfield, 134 additional individuals have lost their lives to COVID-19. This is a very sobering statistic because each one of those 284 individuals represent one person, but represent 284 families. We do not 
take this lightly. We do not make this decision lightly. The mayor has told you that today, just a few minutes ago, I got the numbers for today at 451. That could potentially rise because our cases come in all day. And so by the end of today, that 451 could be higher. This is a crisis, but it's also a time for us to understand the impact of this virus on the city, the state, and the nation. We are on track to surpass last December, December's number, which was 4,496. That was the highest number we had during 2020. Right now, we are at 3,369, 3, and I believe when we add this week's numbers, we will probably surpass our highest number, which was last December. We have consistently seen, seen the numbers go up in our city. We have consistently seen places where people were not taking the necessary precautions. And so we have to do our jobs and we have to now put in mandates, making it necessary that indoors individuals will have on face coverings and that is whether, as the mayor said, they are vaccinated or unvaccinated. The numbers that the mayor talked about, that 30 and under number continues to be extremely alarming. Last week, that was 56.8% of our cases. And so there's work to do uh, with our younger population. The other thing I think is concerning is that schools have not been in session, uh, our public schools. So those numbers are not even included in the numbers that we are giving you right now. And so again, the importance of the mandates that we're putting in place, I cannot stress enough. It's sobering because of the lives lost. It's sobering because we have to stand here and put mandates in place. Our job is to protect the health of the public. And that's a very serious responsibility that the mayor and I take extremely, extremely uh, serious. We care about every resident in the city of Springfield. We care that you and I and all of us get through this pandemic together. 134 additional deaths since we stood here one year ago. The cases are alarming, the deaths are alarming, and the non-compliance is also alarming. Refusing to get vaccinated is not something that individuals should even consider based on what we know about the data around unvaccinated individuals and how we, at least 30% of the individuals who we see in the hospitals are vaccinated. That means 70% who are in the hospital, in the emergency rooms, who are being seen by physicians are, vaccin are unvaccinated. 70% plus unvaccinated in what we're seeing. I don't understand the hesitancy. I don't understand the resistance. Our hospital workers are tired. They are short staffed. Their patients are are afraid because every day they go into an environment where there's potentially death and health devastation. They're working short staff. Their families at home are also suffering because of the real toll this has taken. We don't even want to talk about the mental health toll 
the emotional health toll. Again, this is very serious. Omicron is spreading across this nation, and uh, we have to step in and say, what can we do? What can we do with the power that we have as a Board of Health, as a Department of Health and Human Services, as the CEO of the city in Mayor Sarno? And so coming to mask mandates for all indoor places is what we will do. And that will begin January the 3rd. I thank you for your patience. I ask for your cooperation and understand that you have the power to help us with this pandemic. The power, you have it. We want people to live. We want people to get through this. As we approach New Year's, please heed our warning. Gather in small gatherings. Please make sure you're taking care of yourselves and others. Know that we are finding so many individuals who are right now suffering in hospitals and at home because of a deadly virus that we believe can be prevented. The back, I know you hear about breakthrough cases, and I'll end with this, but the vaccine is doing its job. Its job was to prevent severe illness and death, and the vaccine is doing that. So if I want to live and not die from COVID, it makes perfect sense that I would want to take the vaccination. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Fulton Harris. Thanks, Helen. We all know people, whether friends or family members, who have been stricken with COVID-19 and some, God rest their souls, that have lost their lives. And that goes to the individuals who are unvaccinated or don't want to get unvaccinated. You too know family and friends who have lost their lives. That is the answer to the equation about getting vaccinated. Right now, again, the numbers dictate that Commissioner Colton Harris and I have to implement mandates. And again, the city, all municipal buildings immediately, we've already implemented, masks must be worn to preserve and protect our workforce so they can continue the vital services for you, each and every one of you, the residents, business community, city of Springfield, anybody entering a municipal building must be masked. Doesn't matter of your vaccination status. January 3rd, which is right around the corner, Monday, emergency order, public health order, indoor masks must be worn. That's the any and all businesses, any and all establishments here in the city of Springfield. That will be done for 60 days. Commissioner Colton and I will reassess it March 1st to see where we stand as we've done before. If we reach and attain our goal, we will withdraw uh, the mandates. Subsequently, and again, working together will defeat this COVID-19. But if individuals want to stay resistant, that does not preclude Commissioner Helen Carlton Harris and myself from looking at other mandates as pertaining to uh, uh, the city overall and as pertaining to uh, city workers. We started to see an, a recent uptick of uh, uh, numbers going up uh, with city workers and here in City Hall. We've dealt with that swiftly. We've disinfected those areas, uh, but we're not going to be rolling the dice anymore. And uh, these mandates are coming in effect for the good of each and every uh, one of you. With that, I will uh, shut up and uh, take any, Helen and I will take any questions or comments uh, you might have. Leah. Good, how are you, Leon?
we're going to allow, uh, and we are strongly advocating that people should be a mask and wearing uh, that, and also that they should be gathering in smaller crowds. We're also allowing the balancing act. We're allowing the businesses to properly prepare for this. That, that, that does not preclude businesses now to say, hey, you got to have a mask coming uh, in here. So we're trying to allow businesses to properly prepare um, for January 3rd and get everything that they need to be there. But immediately, again, I want to make sure we're able to keep vital services uh, going for our city residents and business community. So that means immediately to preserve and protect our or my workforce in the city of Springfield, we're doing that. Giving a few days leeway time for the businesses and other entities to properly prepare for the public health protocols. But as Helen, Commissioner Helen Carlton Harris has indicated, we strongly urge that you should be wearing masks, period, and that if possible, you should be really gathering with smaller type crowds or crowd, people that you know, uh, uh, close friends, family that you know that have been vaccinated or are negative testing. But Helen mentioned, Leon, again, the vaccine does work. The, the high majority of people that are hospitalized, whether it's in Springfield, whether it's in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, whether it's in the United States or America, that are in difficult situations, are unvaccinated, unvaccinated. Now, some they say with the breakthrough are uh, very mild symptoms, if no symptoms at all. So what do vaccines do? Prove that you don't get deathly ill and you don't die. And that's been proven. Uh, but you see the vast majority, again, our, I think our overall vaccination rate is still under 60%. We have to do much better on that. And, you know, with the Vax Force, the Youth Vax Force, the outreach that has gone to the uh, African-American community and the Latino community, those numbers have to pick up. Right now, Bay State and Mercy are overwhelmed. But Dr. Kerouac and Dr. Roos have indicated that to me. That's why they're saying on emergency room visits really have to be of the nature of an emergency room visit. You can't get your COVID test there. There are plenty of places where you can get your COVID test. I commend Commissioner Helen Carlton Harris. We had about 170,000 home tests, and I'll look to see if I can get more from Governor Baker. Uh, but also AMR has done Herculean efforts. There's other testing areas. But there is numerous vaccination areas. I would like to see that huge influx of crowd going to get vaccinated. I mean, AMR is taking on thousands at the East Fillmore. My la update last night with Patrick Leonardo, Director of Operations. So that's the reasoning uh, on that. 60 days, March 1st, we'll reassess. And if, as we've done before, if the numbers uh, trend up as far as vaccination rates and the infection rates trend down, then we'll lift the uh, we'll lift the mandate. But I don't know if Helen wants to comment at all on that. No, I think you've said it. I mean, the the January third date was specific again to working with the uh, community to make sure everyone understood the reasons why we were doing this and were prepared. We still are under a mask advisory. We've had one in place um, ever since November the first. So we we needed to take stronger measures because the advisory wasn't working based on uh, what we're seeing and what our numbers, the data, is telling us. And so, so uh, that, you know, data, so you uh, say that 41 positive cases, you know, that, 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 you know cases yesterday. So, so I didn't hear the number you said, Liam. Uh, No, no, yesterday, yesterday was updated to 296, which at the time was the highest level, I believe, ever in the city. Helen just coming in now with the update indicates 451. That's what I'm saying. That's, the, that's, that's, the, that's what only. came in today only. Okay. That's, that's, that's the highest ever. And as Commissioner Helen Carlton Harris indicated, we are on pace to beat the high water mark of last December. December which was well over 4,000. That's right. That's correct. And the updates, you know, uh, Helen will get them, and I get them, and then uh, the next day or later on, they'll say additional cases have come in on that. 
Any other questions or comments? Pat? You mentioned well, Helen, Commissioner Helen Carlton Harris have talked, to, we've talk, spoken about that. And again, anything that we might consider doing in, is in the uh, public health. Uh, but, you know, that would be looking at uh, vaccination type issues. Uh, and uh, anything to do uh, pertaining, I'd like, you know, statewide, if anything had to come up with, with restrictions such as with businesses, again, I'm trying to balance public health and keeping our economy going. But I think we said that when Helen and I came out in late November, that we would, nothing was off the table. If, if it had, it needs to be done. Nothing is off the table. At that point in time, the strategy, early in December, the strategy there was again, continuing to plead and push on the vaccination, but also flooding the area with testing kits that you could get your your own testing kits on that to put a realization to people going oh my god I didn't even realize I have COVID and that is done in protection of yourself and your family and your friends and your community so I'm hoping the trend goes differently and we can finally start to move out of this COVID-19 quagmire uh, but right now and Helen and I have based our decisions pertaining to public health, science, and uh, medicine, and the numbers are just uh, numbers are just too high now. People are not adhering to the strongly worded recommendations, so we're going to have to go to uh, mandates. I know it might be tough to swallow right now, but it will make us stronger down the road. And, and our goal here is to get complete public business and consumer confidence and how do you do that by being able to control or hopefully eradicate this COVID-19 so we need cooperation in working together here the answer to the equation is shots in the arms shots in the arms shots in the arms it's proven effective it's proven that people are not don't get hospitalized don't die god forbid and um, that's what we'll continue to do. But right now, the masks have to come back, mandated in all city buildings, workers and anybody entering a city building to do business, you have to have that mask on. January 3rd, which is right around the corner Monday to allow proper uh, time for businesses to adhere to this on the public health protocol, indoor mask mandates will be put in effect. If I may just add one more thing, I think it's important to acknowledge that Omicron is five to seven times more transmissible than Delta was, depending on what scientists um, you read. Uh, so that is another reason. We know that this is a more transmissible uh, variant, and it went in order to get ahead of it, or maybe we're already behind it, uh, because uh, whichever scientist you listen to, they say that about 70% of the cases in the United States right now are due to the Omicron uh, variant. So uh, that's another reason that we need to do everything we can to protect the residents um, of the city and our workforce as well. Helen brings up a good point. Late November, or maybe even early December, let's say late, but it was still Delta cases. This thing has just come on like a storm. And it's, 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 it's moved very rapidly. And, uh, you know, we have to make these moves to uh, combat it. So, um, just another mm -hmm. question. Yes, they have. I'm going to let the expert handle that. I have my, I, I know it well, but I, Helen is the expert. So we certainly will um, obviously um, follow CDC guidance. One of the challenges with that guidance is they're saying five days if you're asymptomatic. And so we are working just to make sure 
um, that we have complete guidance in place uh, for our city workforce as well as our residents. So we will comply with the CDC. Also, we have not received the guidance from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So the CDC makes recommendations, advisories, and then states adopt it and tweak if necessary. But we certainly uh, intend to uh, comply. I think one of the challenges is the symptomatic versus asymptomatic. The other thing is that many of our workers that I've spoken to are concerned about the shortening because they say that we're prioritizing the workforce over their health, which is not the case based on the science that I've read. But we will comply. We will make sure our guidance is concrete uh, for our city workforce, as I know um, others in other workforces, such as healthcare institutions, will do. I know it's been, you know, it's almost two years now. It's been surreal. And, and God knows uh, you're all tired. I'm tired. Helen's tired. Uh, but we're going to get through it. So we're going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly. But as I stated, opening up, uh, you know, we've dealt with a number of natural man-made disasters. My cabinet heads down the rank and file are tested and true. You know, we're always going to tell you what has happened, what we're going to do about it, and, and just as important, hope. We will get through this together, but we have to work together. And then we could look to start to get rid of some of these mandates or even more mandates uh, coming across. We're trying to, per Helen and I are trying to personalize this to each and every one of you, whether viewing, listening, or reading. This is all about protecting yourself, protecting your family, your loved ones, your friends, your community. It'd be a different story if it was a few couple of years ago where we had no answer to the equation. We were flying the plane as we were building it. We do have an answer to the equation now, and that is the vaccines. So I'd like to see, you know, there's been an onslaught of uh, uh, going on with the testing sites. I'd like to see that same type of onslaught going on to our vaccination sites. Uh, very accessible, no excuses, and the vaccine uh, works. I don't know if there's any other questions or comments. Pat, you, look, you have an inquisitive look oh, in your... They will let Helen. She... I absolutely believe we're going to see higher numbers. And so definitely we see the 451 today, which may go up tomorrow. Um, I believe uh, that it has only been a few days since Christmas. I expect that within the next week, perhaps the next two weeks, we're going to see um, the numbers increase. I do not think that this is the highest that we're going to see. And it's difficult for me to say that looking at a 451, but going forward, those numbers will increase. I am absolutely sure of that. And again, our, uh, to all the frontline workers that are out there from the city side and uh, you know the average rank and file that you might take for granted, whether in grocery stores or other places or bus drivers, but to the medical professionals, as Helen indicated, they are worn out. It is emotional. And they're being overwhelmed, especially in their ERs. We need to help them out. You need to help each other out. So please, there's plenty of facts out there. Do your review, that's fine. You wanna get the facts on the vaccine, please do that, but get the facts. The old adage, I think Senator Patrick Moynihan would say out of New York years ago, you know, everybody's entitled to opinion, but not the facts. And then read those facts and then go get the shot. Get the vaccination. It's proven that it works. This new variant, Omicron, is a different animal out there, a different animal. And we have to attack it uh, differently. 
But with your help, we're going to stay steadfast. We're going to beat it. But we need your help. Any other questions or comments? Good health to you all. God bless you. And here's to a much better and happier 2022. But please get vaccinated. Thank you very much.